Good morning and welcome to our devotions for today, Wednesday in Easter 6. Today is also the eve of the Ascension. It's also the third rogation day in this period. And it is also at this time my 35th anniversary of ordination to the sacred priesthood. I ask that you remember me in your prayers as I continue this journey on. The call of God is an important work. And though we are all called in our various ways, the ordained ministry has always been. perceived as a sacred calling and as I observe my 35 years I want to ask you to pray to God for new vocations to the sacred ministry especially young vocations we need our youth to be guided by God's Holy Spirit and we need them to spend significant time in ministry that in years to come they may be a great blessing to the church. The call to ministry and the way of ministry is something that takes place not only within the context of the academic training, the years of walking with God and walking with the people of God. It is that that enables us to be of some help and guidance. So the younger we're able to have persons begin in this journey, the greater the investment and the greater their ability to be of use to the church in years to come. So pray for new vocations to the sacred ministry among our young people. Turn now, O God of hosts. Behold and tend divine. 
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your bountiful blessings towards us, your children. We pray that as we sow those seeds which you have given us, they will blossom into fruits of love, joy, peace, and goodwill. We are your servants. You know our needs and ask that we reap only what you desire for us. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Put into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, reading verse 41 to 46. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Here ends the reading. In our reading for this morning, Jesus challenges those in the hearing of his voice. He asks them a question. The usual thing is that they're usually the ones asking Jesus a question. But on this occasion, Jesus asks them a question. And the question is a, what we would probably call in our day a nice little riddle. And as I reflected on it, I, I remember in the past how persons were so amused and intrigued when they had a riddle or they heard a new riddle. And it would always be an opportunity for persons to test other people. And you would spend time wrestling with this riddle. And more often than not, you would give up. Sometimes you would be lucky and manage to get the byline, get that little, that little thing in there that unravels the riddle. But oftentimes, <clears throat> it was such a tricky thing that you, you often had to ask, well, what, what does it mean? And that was the challenge that persons often had. What does, what does it mean? So more and more as we gather today and we think about this passage, it's important that we actually try to 
reflect a little bit, not so much on trying to solve it for ourselves, but more especially trying to appreciate something that is a little bit deeper than this. Trying to appreciate what we would call in our time the paradox. The paradox. The folks of early days wrestled with paradoxes. A paradox basically is an experience of of two statements that independently they they make sense. <coughs> they they state something that is true. But what they're stating that is true is that subject is common to both. And there is a sense that it, to all intents and purposes, the two things can't be true. Because if one is true, it makes the other false. But a paradox is where one finds oneself with a, a set of statements that are, that are both true. And they're both about the same thing. And they're actually diametrically opposed to each other. And that's something like what Jesus is playing with this, in this passage here today. And the resolve or the resolution of it is that one has to accept that both things are true. And in many ways, this is part of the faith journey. It's part of what many of the mystics have come to discover. When we look at our world and our, our journeys, there's so many paradoxes that we face. And oftentimes, because our world tends to want resolution, we, we don't like things to be untidy. We don't like things to, to remain open. We want to be able to have a definitive answer. But the challenge with the definitive answer is that the definitive answer that you are asking for is not necessarily at the same level of your awareness or understanding or consciousness. And so what we do or what we tend to do is that we decide on one side or another and we spend the rest of our lives in arguments trying to prove that you are wrong or you trying to prove that I am wrong. And we, we use a lot of our energy arguing about something that neither of us understands. And the only way one can understand it is to go up higher. Is to be f open, to have greater openness to spirit. So when I think of that, I realize that the divine God in, his, in God's infinite wisdom puts in our way stepping stones for higher service. And rather than seeing them as stepping stones for higher service, we see them as points for debate. So rather than going up and allowing that which is separate to come together, like you would experience if you are at Grantley Adams Airport and you are taken off. Well, we can't say Grantley Adams Airport because that's a bad analogy because <clears throat> 
Barbados is so small that by the time you get to a particular height that, that I'm trying to make the point for you will be way out in the sea. So let's say the airport of Miami and you're heading across to the East Coast. East Coast, West Coast, West Coast. By the time you get up high enough by Texas, all those cars and people that you would have seen as you left Miami Airport, they're all of a sudden non-existent, but they're there. There are cars on the roads, on the highways. There are people walking on pavements. But the landscape looks completely different. And you can't see any of that detail. But it is all there. And so it is with the things that we see as individualistic or separate. That when we are able to go higher in our awareness and in our consciousness and our understanding, things that seem to be diametrically opposed seem to find a way of coming together and you can appreciate the oneness. You can appreciate that, yes, this, without this one, this is incomplete. And without this one, this is incomplete. And that's, that therefore then for me is a stepping stone for us so that all these things that we find to be so much in opposition to each other really and truly are invitations to come up higher. And hence the statement that we would have heard earlier in, in last week, I believe it was, where it says, don't judge, right? We, we, we got to be careful not to judge because when we judge, we are standing from one particular side and we are making a judgment about another, partic another side. When in, when in reality, if we would come up higher, then we could see the, the, the oneness, the unity of the sides. It's like arguing that what we call the head side of a coin is the coin. And some person that said, no, the tail side, that's, that's the coin. And in reality, it's, it's, it's two sides of the same coin. These are the things that I believe are calling us now in this particular time to wrestle with. And to wrestle not in argument, but to wrestle with ourselves and to accept that there's a lot that we don't understand. And it doesn't mean that we are ignorant, although we are, but not in the pejorative sense of the word ignorant as we use it, but ignorant in the sense of not knowing. And if you accept that we, we don't know, then if we are wise, the work then is how do I know? How do I come to a greater understanding? How do I come up higher? One of the ways that I find helpful is the willingness to be open to new things. The willingness to listen to another perspective. There is a, a text, it's called A Course in Miracles, and I came across it once when someone loaned me it. And I remember one, one of the early exercises that you were asked to do was to look at a cup and decide that I do not know what that is. And I thought that was tremendous nonsense. But the more you did it, the more you realized that <clears throat> what you were being encouraged to do was to let go of your baggage. Because we, we look around our world and we say, well, that's a house and 
that's another building, that's an office, that's a car, that's a truck. And yes, that's what they are. But, but when we extend that to everything in our lives, I already know what that is, so I don't need to look at it again. I already know what that's about, so I don't need to explore it. I see a, a quick view of it, and I, I know that. We do it to a person. We do it with persons in that I know who he is. I don't need to listen to him. I know what he, he's about. I know what kind of things he says. <clears throat> and that's detrimental because by, by doing that, we've closed our minds off to what's possible. We've closed our minds off to learning something new or experiencing something new or growing or becoming. And I think that's part of the challenge. We see it through scriptures where the people of Jesus' day had the Old Testament, the Torah, sorry. And they, they understood what it said, what it meant. And so as Jesus came sharing, sharing a message of compassion, which in many ways seem to stand against some of the statements of the Torah, they refused to listen to him. Because it didn't sit with what they had known. And therein lies our situation as well. That when things don't sit with what we have known, we tend to shut them out. And in doing that, we are not able to do the growing that we need to do. So how do we grow? How do we go up higher? We go up higher by willing to be open and receptive. It's like <laughs> when you were a child, and your parent didn't want you to go certain places. They would tell you that there's a boogeyman down there. <clears throat> and that would keep you quiet. Or there was a man in the canes, or there was a heart man out, or there was a three-wheel hearse, all those. I don't know if you remember those stories or if you were around then. But all these were things that were said to keep persons under control, to keep them in the areas you want them to be and not let them venture beyond. And in almost every aspect of life, that's what we've done to each other. We have told stories. And unfortunately, many of us believe the stories. And we don't see the reason, the initial reason for the stories. And we don't always recognize that there's a time that arises where we've got to go beyond the story. Because if you don't go beyond the story, then we deplete ourselves of the beautiful experience of this life. So we've got to recognize that <clears throat> there are lots of stories that we've been told. Even when we look at scriptures, the scriptures are written in a way that yes, there is that divine presence in them, but their, their, their choice, what we have included in our canon, how we have interpreted certain words, all hold a particular understanding. But there's more. There has to be more because God cannot be contained in man's concepts. If God is contained in man's concepts, then there's, there's a tremendous error about God. So there must be that constant opening for revelation. And what is revelation? Revelation is being open to something new. Being open to something that isn't here now in our understanding. We see this in the world. We see how the world continues to open itself up for possibilities. And someone dreams of something that is possible, even if they can't figure out how to do it. The dream alone gives them the, the sense of the possibility. 
And with that, they then open themselves up to the way. You and I need to do the same thing with our spiritual journey. We don't have to discard what we've received, but we've got to open ourselves up to the possibility of more. Because that's the only way we will expand and, and evolve and grow and become. If we continue to maintain the status quo, that which is, there will be no growth. One of the beautiful messages that comes out of antiquity <clears throat> about Christianity is that it was called the way, the people of the way. And that was, the, that was what they had in common, not a doctrine, but that they were people of the way. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the way. They were the people of the way. There was an openness, an ex sense of exploration. And this was happening before it was shut down. But that was the initial effort to, to, to expand, to, to be open, to, to see what is possible, to hear the various cultures and the various contributions and, and to allow oneself to be expanded. Throughout the Middle Ages, we have demonized so many aspects of spirituality. And we've caused people, persons to be so afraid of various things that they've only kept this particular pathway. But right now, where we are at, I believe the challenge has come for us to realize how man has taken his energies <clears throat> and has developed things. And many of the things that he has developed has caused so much catastrophe in our world. The folks in Venice are talking about the canals and how refreshed they are because there isn't all that commerce on them. Places where there's, there used to be pollution, they're claiming that there's freshness. Because man has used the ability God has given him for spiritual ascension to dig himself deeper into materialism. And this is where our world is now. And we've had an opportunity to stop and see how in just a matter of weeks, nature reclaims itself. Over the last couple of hours, there's been a kind of a strange rain falling here at Codrington. I've never seen it before. It's like a mist. It's almost like snow. Very, very light. And very constant. And you're wondering <clears throat> what is happening in our world. What is it saying to us? at this time. Don't ignore it. Be open to it and allow it. Be open and allow. Learn from what is around you. Be open. There is so much out here for us. Be open. Do not think that you've got it nailed down. You, you, you don't have it nailed down. You have what you want nailed down, but you don't have a clue of the grandness of what's out there. Look again at some of those stories. Look again at some of those works from all those folks in antiquity who discovered truths and whose truths were just burnt or set aside because they didn't fit with where certain powers wanted to take the thought processes. Look at them again. Or if you haven't seen them before, search for them so that you can hear the paradox, so that you can personally live the tension and not just Believe that your world is the only world. 
if David calls him Lord, how can he be a son? Pray God would give us all the courage to do what is needful <clears throat> in our time and help us to be willing to live in that space. That, that space, that in-between space where there's openness. and an attitude for oneness. Pray God would give us that courage and that willingness to step out from our places of fear of the boogeyman and the three-wheel hearse and the something under the bed and take our power and search for ourselves. May God give us his grace. May God allow us that spirit of inquiry that we may not be silenced by the riddle, but that we may see the riddle as an invitation to go higher. Amen. Be safe and be blessed. Have a great day. Lord, pour out your spirit on all the peoples of the earth. Let your sons and daughters prophecy send us dreams and visions reveal the secrets of your heart Lord our faith is rising let all heaven sound the coming of your day there's gonna be a great awakening there's gonna be great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on Jesus they will be saved Lord pour out your spirit of the world let them see your glory let them fall in reverent awe show your mighty power shake the heavens and the earth Lord the world is waiting let creation see the coming of your day there's gonna be a great awakening there's gonna be a great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on Jesus they Revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening, and everyone who calls on Jesus, they.